Hey, Bob. Bob or whoever is uh, there. Good morning. Good morning. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I welcome you all to the one and only Trinity United Methodist Church this 19th of February already. It is a 2023. It is an amazing day. It was an amazing day yesterday. As you can see, we have beautiful flowers from Barbara Sinclair's uh, celebration of life. We had many, many people here. We had many sharings. And it's so nice to have this, this visual um, remembrance of her love for the church for so many years and our, our celebration yesterday. So thank you all for who attended. And uh, let's just keep Barbara's memory alive in our hearts and know that she's a woman of God, just like you all are. And the men, you're all men of God. And we have work to do in this church. So God, God bless you all. And now what are we doing over here? Are you two misbehaving already? <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. You're in God's house. It's up to him. <laughs> All right. Let us see. Let us. I'm ready to worship. I mean, it's been a busy few days, but I am ready. I'm, I'm never not ready to worship. Heidi, let's hit it. <laughs> seated as we all now watch how the candle lighting is done. It is done very reverently, very properly, and we surely thank you so much for all you do with that, because 
it's just it's the candles. We have to have the light of Christ. The light of Christ comes in, and the light of Christ goes out. So let us turn now to our call to worship. Let us stand today on the same mountain as Elijah, Moses, Peter, James, and John. Let us see the transfiguration of our Lord. Yes, as prophets and disciples knew the truth of our Lord's identity, let us recognize it today and every day. May our visions today be individual and united. Let us hear the words of the prophets and be called to grace with Jesus. Let us once again hear God's voice thunder, this is my son. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name, amen. amen. Let us now stand as able and sing Christ, whose glory fills the skies in our hymnals on 173, 1, 2, and 3, as well as projected, please. <clears throat> Amen. Please be seated. Let us join now in our unison opening prayer. Holy God, upon the mountain you revealed our Messiah, who later by his death and resurrection would fulfill both words of the law and the prophets. By remembering his transfiguration this day, enlighten our path so that we might be of service to our brothers and sisters in the everlasting glory of Jesus. Amen. And let us now join in our statement of faith uh, from the Church of Canada. And remember, these are all extremely similar. These are Christian creeds reminding us of, of why we are here and what we believe. It's on 883 and it's also on the screen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us take a moment to silently confess to God what we need to share from this week. Let us pray. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. As sure as we are of the blazing face we see in Jesus, as sure as we are of the words, as sure as we are of the warmth in our heart, God loves us. He forgives us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thank you and amen. Amen. 
It's time now for our anthem. Are you ready? You had a busy day yesterday yes. too, Heidi. We're ready to <laughs> you are ready. Thank you. Lord, you are toe tapping this morning. <laughs> Choir, thank you. Keep up those good moves, Michelle. You're just that's what this is. And, and Eileen, thank you again so much. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> We're playing the shell game up here. <laughs> The spirit just fills me this morning. What can I do? I'm exhausted, but I'm up. And... Choir, you keep that, keep that spirit. Patsy, yes. and you just had surgery. You're hopping, my gosh. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that, Heidi, Choir, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. And we're going to continue this joyful lift. I mean, we are going into Lent very soon. But those are little Easter, so we will have solemnness, we will have very extreme reverence, but we'll also have joy. So don't think it's like, oh, you know, let's pull the shades down, let's all be solemn. No, it's, it's both. It's both joy and, and uh, extreme focus and reverence. It's time for Grace Jar. Grace Jar, who would like to share grace this morning? Now we're quiet. Are you coming this way, Karen? Patsy, you both? No, I got you all. Well, we're going to hear about somebody cutting somebody off in the message today, so that's a good, good lead-in. He's beautiful. So I don't have any dollar bills. Take an apple. <laughs> uh, Roger, uh, Robert's procedure on... Um, there you go. Roger, Robert's procedure on Tuesday went, went very well, so I'm praising God for that. Thank you. Great. Thank be to Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. Um, tomorrow, the 20th, would have been my dad's birthday, but it is also Shelby's birthday. Oh, wow. She squeaked in at three minutes before midnight. <laughs> um, couldn't have shared it with a nicer person. And uh, she is such a joy in so many ways. Um, but I also have to put in a minor plug for Krieger Elementary School is doing the Wizard of Oz this year. 
and she is the Wicked Witch, and I'd like to invite you to come and watch Art Imitate Life. Oh. And how old is she now, Karen? Karen, how old is Shelby? She's going to be. Why do I think she's going to be older than that? She grows up fast. Good morning. Uh, Mike, oh, Mike, 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 Mike. I thought it was Sorry. coming. It's right. There you go. Oh, I can come down one. Wh whatever is whatever easier. I will easier. say it again. Um, Tuesday is Michelle's birthday, and complete with ankle that's currently working really well. So Good. I'm very, very thankful for that. Thanks for thanks for the healing, Lord. Anyone else? Anybody online? Okay, very quiet. Then let us turn now. Yes. To yes. Yes. Craig. Darlene. Craig. Yes. Good morning. Uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to both Heidi and Bob for their contributions yesterday in, in doing such a fantastic job in Barbara's uh, celebration of life. I, it could not have done, we could not have done, or they, you know, the whole event would not have been nearly as good without their tremendous contributions. So I just want to say thank you. We are truly blessed with our, our hands behind the scenes here. So thank you guys, you know that we love you. We need you. <laughs> Anybody else online? All right, then let's move forward with our young at heart. And we are doubly blessed today, doubly blessed. Heather has volunteered to read a poem to share a little bit about one of my favorite poets. And then we are also gonna hear from Clay. So Heather, would you like to come forward first, please? This is our last, uh, no, no, we have one more Friday and Sunday in. Like this month. Uh, good, morning. good morning. Good morning, Heather. I'm representing Black History Month. Did you know Black History Month started? Methodist and Black History Week started back in 1758 when John Wesley baptized two Negro slaves, quote, mm. Negro slaves, setting the pattern for receiving people of color into the societies and the church. And in 1760, Annie Schwab became a founding member of the first Methodist church in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So today I bring to you Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. Langston Hughes, James Mercer Langston Hughes, born February 1st, 1901, and died May 22nd, 1967. He was an American poet, socialist, activist, novelist, playwright, and colonist from Joplin, Missouri. Hughes is the best known as the leader of the Harlem Renaissance. He moved to New York City as a young man where he made his career. Hughes refused to differentiate between his personal experience and the common experience of Black America. He wanted to tell the stories of people in ways that reflected the actual culture, religion, including the love of music, laughter, and language itself alongside their suffering. Through his poetry, novels, plays, essays, and children's books, he promoted equality, condemned racism, and injustice and celebrate African-American culture, humor, and spirituality. The dream keeper. Bring me all of your dreams, your dreamer. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from two rough fingers of the world. And that is what poetry do. Wrap up your dreams, protect and preserve and hold them until maybe they come true. Columbus dream of finding a new world. He found it. Edison dream of light, more light, and he made light. All the progress that human beings have made on this old earth of ours grew out of dream. That is why it is wise, I should think, hold fast the dream. For if dreams die, life is a broken bird that cannot fly. Hold fast the dream. For when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. And that's from Langston's Hughes. Thank you so much, Heather. Very much appreciated. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was a teacher, uh, I would have a short poems like exactly the one you read about the, the two rough hands, hands of the world, and we were talking about that. My students had to memorize it, and then they would do a, a elaboration about it. And I run into them even to this day, and they're in their thirties and forties, and they'll tell me the poem and they recite it again. And it's amazing how a dream they heard about that, and you hear about dreams, and Bryn, and you guys, all you young people. You have a dream. If you have a vision of something, go for it. Hang on to it. Don't say, don't let anybody say you can't do this. That'll never happen. If you have a good dream about something, hold on to it in your heart. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. And now our double blessing, Clay, update. 
I see a lot of uh, bottles around, oh, jars. Hmm, wonder what that could be. First of all, I have to say, God is awesome. Because I prepared something, and Heather, the last line of your poem is spot on with where we're going to start. We're going to start with a story. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of Sir Ernest Shackleton. So, in 1914, he decided that he was going to take a crew of about 12 men, and they were going to sail down, and they were going to walk across Antarctica. His ship was called the Endeavor. So they set sail to make it the way down to Antarctica. Well, it turns out they didn't make it because they got caught in pack ice. And what happened is they, they were like 90, 80 miles from Antarctica. And it got so bad that their ship was encased in the ice. And as they couldn't do anything, so they stayed with the ship. The ship actually moved with the pack ice away from Antarctica, probably about 700 miles, before the pressure of the ice, the pack ice, caused the ship to have to break up. So what did they do? They abandoned ship, they created a camp on the ice, but then they realized they couldn't bring everything that they had. They had to kind of cut corners and lower their weight. Each man was allowed two pounds of a personal possession, two pounds, okay? Sir Ernest Shackelford, being the captain, did the same thing. He carried his Bible with, with him on the ship. He could not bring his whole Bible. He took out one, actually a few pages, to carry with him as part of his personal possessions. They happen to be the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not need. He let, me, he let me rest in fields of green grass. He leadeth me in quiet pools of fresh water. He give me new strength. He guides me on right paths as he has promised. Even though I go through the deepest steps, I will not be afraid for you are with me. Your, your Lord, your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. He chose those verses because they were in a tough situation. They actually survived, which is a really cool story. But he instilled in the men that God is going to be with us and get us through. So why did I share that story? Because we are starting Lent. And you noticed that there are a bunch of these. And every family, I would like every family to take one. And Pastor Darlene has mentioned that every day during Lent, you're going to put some coins in for stuff that you have, because God blesses us with so much awesome stuff, like, what do we got? Baseball caps and winter hats. Great stuff, right? Like dolls and stuffed animals. Who, lo who can't love those, right? How about, um, where are some other good ones? Every bathroom you have in your house, man, that is super de duper. But you're also, yes, you laugh, but it is a cool thing. You're also going to find in there a heart. And this is why I want to give this message. On one side of the heart, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I want you to remember this verse. I want you to remember the 23rd Psalm. And maybe every day as you're putting your coins into your jar, you can read that verse. And remember that he's always going to be our shepherd. And even if we're stuck on an ice floe in Antarctica we're in the 1914s, or if we're at Trinity United Methodist Church in the 2023s, he will always be our shepherd. There's another side of the verse, which is nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 20, 38, and 39. That's another verse I would ask that you maybe want to consider during this season of Lent. For during Lent is a time to reflect on how God is so important in our life and how we really need God and how maybe we haven't been as good as we want to be. 
But I want you to remember this as you get into those times where you really reflect and say, man, I really didn't do everything God asked me to do, that nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. He will always be there for us. He will always be our shepherd. So I want to, if everybody could take one of these when you leave today, one per family, and follow the instructions, put all your coins in because we're so blessed. But also remember that we are blessed because God is our shepherd and he will always be with us wherever, wherever, wherever we are. Thank you. Thank you, Clay. And now, do we have Sunday school today? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, kids, we're going to uh, sing our song. Please be seated. Please be seated. We are, I am overjoyed to see Maddie here. Maddie, how's your healing going? Are you going to run up? You're not going to run up here and, and leap like I try to do or used to try to do. Good. Okay. Would you please come forward, Maddie? Madison Bauman. And she's reading. Oh, look at you are moving faster. Mom, is she doing everything right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good answer. <laughs> Go ahead, Maddie. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain of God. To the elders, he said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain. In sight of the people of Israel, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses stayed on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Thank you so much, Patty. Be careful. Well, that was when... Uh... Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone. And my reading now comes from Matthew chapter 17. I invite you to stand as able for the reading of the gospel. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9, the transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Now you see, all of a sudden Jesus is talking to two people who've been dead for hundreds of years. And then Peter says to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. What Peter was speaking, rambling on, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, the beloved. Him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And they were coming down the mountain. Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. And again, you'll see, uh, Heidi, do we, this light is on now, isn't it? Now, what you see here is a black light. Notice how it's making 
this beautiful covering shine. Can you turn that light off? You see a difference? All right, the light is not on. Now, Jesus, that's the normal face, that, for example. Now, all of a sudden, his face shone, and his clothes was glistening, super white. This is what happened. Once in a lifetime, this was seen. This was a transfiguration. Please join me in prayer. Oh, Lord, as I prepare to share words, may these words be from you, coming through me to your people who you want to hear it this day. May it warm their hearts, may it open their eyes, and may they all be transfixed as they rehear the story of your transfiguration. Amen. This is one of those examples that people say, well, oh, the Bible is boring. There's nothing in it. It's just about old people and they talk. and this, uh, It's not boring if you really read it, if you know the accounts that are given in it. For example, how many times do people really walk on water? Uh, when do people see burning bushes? When do you see people miraculously healed? When do you hear, uh, when, when is it that shepherds ever hear uh, angels singing? When do people hear angels speak to them? Uh, when do you hear about people traipsing hundreds, thousands of miles with no GPS, no uh, good old AAA triptychs, just a star and they, they follow that far? That's all in the Bible. But one of the most amazing, I say, Hollywood things seen is this transfiguration. The time when Jesus takes his three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up to a high mountain, just like the other story with when uh, uh, Moses went up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. High mountain peaks are very important in the Bible. When he takes them up and he stands there and he's talking, and there the, the disciples hear, and all of a sudden they, they look and they see Jesus, Jesus talking to two dead people, Elijah and Moses. And they're like in shock. Now, Peter, Peter is known to be very verbal, very strong, bold Peter. Anyhow, Peter starts to jabber. You know, some people, like sometimes I will start to jabber, ramble on. If you see something horrible happen or you're exciting and you just start to talk. You can't help yourself. And what happens when Peter starts talking about, oh, you know, I can build little booths, little huts here. I can build little tents. You know, one for you, Jesus, one for Elijah, one for Mo Moses. And who breaks in? There's a voice. Who breaks in? God's voice. And what does God say? This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Like Peter, stop it. Be quiet. You're here to see something miraculous. You're here to see the transfiguration. What God wanted them to see, what Jesus wanted them to see, was he was who he says he was. He was the Messiah they were waiting for. He is God divine. God come to earth. This shocked them. When they realized this, when they heard God's word, they fell to the ground in fear. Who wouldn't? You're just overcome. Who wouldn't? And the next thing they know, Jesus is touching their shoulders. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Like Clay said, God is always with us. He's always with us. <coughs> We're not alone. That's it. So just think what it's like to have that happen for a moment. And you get up and, and nothing else is said. I mean, nothing else is said. They're going down the mountain. And Jesus says, do not tell anybody about this. Don't tell anybody. Have you ever heard, don't tell what you saw? That's not always good to have here. You don't want to hear that. Kids, if you ever hear that, young people, if you ever hear somebody say, don't say, don't tell what happened, don't say, that's not often good. Tell, you know, if you think you should tell, you tell somebody. But God, uh, Jesus, don't tell this, don't tell until the Son of Man dies and is raised from the dead. Well, they are totally confused now. But Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He knows what's ahead. So another idea, this knowing who Jesus really is, when they come to the time and Jesus is crucified, they're going to be scared to death. And Jesus knows they're not going to hold on. They're going to deny him. They're going to run and hide but they will still have in their hearts the vision, the vision. And they'll be able to be strong and build from that. The whole idea of hearing this again today is God gives us visions of various types in our, in various, in our lives. I have a, a few I'll share with you. Well, one I'll start right, right away with is, um, uh, his name is um, Buckner, Frederick Buckner. Uh, a very well-known writer, theologian, uh, Presbyterian pastor, and uh, 
his uh, daughter was very, very sick, a young daughter, and he was very troubled, by, as most parents would be, and he, he, he just pulled over on the side of the road once and was praying and was troubled. He just, he just couldn't drive. He just was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the cars are going beside him. He looks up, he sees a car, and on the license plate, the word trust. And to him, it was like an epiphany, like awakening. That's a sign from God to trust, trusting God. And that was all he needed. He felt God's love. He just felt he, he trusted. Well, he would go on and tell people in the community, in his church, what had happened. And a while later, I think a couple of years actually passed, and someone visited him in his office. And it turned out to be a gentleman who worked for a trust company. He had heard the story and he realized he must be the one with a license plate. He had a bag, he gave it to him. It was the license plate that said trust. And people often, why do you have that old license plate? And he said, it might not mean anything to you, but to me, it's a holy relic. Is anybody here, would you like to share anything that you might've seen? I mentioned that perhaps not as bright as me, the transfiguration, but something where you knew God sent you a message, something for you to hold on to when the times of your life got rough. Anybody have any? I know you've probably had them and you're just like, oh, that, you just, that can't be. Yeah, yeah, I don't. But believe me, they happen. And don't think you're too young. I, I, I hope I haven't, I'm not repeating myself, but over my whole life, I mean, I remember as like a two-year-old, um, I've seen pictures of, uh, my parents had beautiful gardens and I would want, I'd stumble around, I was like a toddler. And I'd walk in these gardens. I remember one, I remember this like yesterday, this beautiful um, uh, purple flower and it had like little spikes. What was that called? What is that? Pretty common, you see little spikes. In, and as a little baby, little, I would touch this thing and go, oh, I mean, the, the tact, I love the, the, the touch of this flower. And I remember I was by myself in the garden. Just, you know, my parents were over there. At the, I was all by myself, but I remember hearing a voice and it came from up this way. Yeah, thing up towards Mount Beacon, okay. Uh, as a kid, and I, I didn't know what it was, but I know it was something said to me. And I, for years, never knew what it was. And I just remembered that. It was real weird. Well, then, you know, different little things, like I've noticed, like license plates and kinds of things, and I think, that's really neat. And I would start jotting them down on, you know, just to keep all this stuff. But when I was teaching, um, you know, after a long day in school, your, your mind's going a million directions, and I was I came over 84 from Beacon to Fishkill, and I was going right around the corner, and I was thinking all about school, and again, Mount Beacon, I never made that connection to Mount Beacon always being to my right, uh, was up that way, and I'm driving along, and I, as clear as I hear Craig on the, on the Zoom, or, or Nicole, as anybody speaking, don't you remember why we sent you? And I don't know why I didn't drive off the road, I mean, I'm like, what, who, what, don't you remember why we sent you? And I'm like, well, what's that? Who's we? And that troubled me. So, you know, I kept in my head, oh, that's weird. That's, what does that mean? Who, we? And not too long after that, a, a, a female, the first woman pastor was appointed to our church. And I didn't want a woman pastor any more than anybody else did. <laughs> I mean, things have changed. And, um, I meant I was the chair of the worship committee at the time, and I went to meet her because we were going to plan a welcome. Often churches have welcomes to the new pastor, you know, farewell, the whole thing. And so I went because I wanted to plan this with her. So I knocked on the door and she said, come in. And I walked in and I heard the voice say, that should be you in that chair. I mean, again, talk about falling down when you hear, you know, you see, you hear God's voice. I should, well, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't think who that was, but I'm like, wow, this is weird. And I started to talk to her and, you know, I became a, a good friend. And I, that's why I'm here. God continued to speak to her saying, you should do this. You, you do this, you do that. You really should think about it. And it just all fell into place. And then I went early on, I said, well, I had this thing happen. This, don't you remember why we, we sent you? And she said, well, that's the, the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's God, that's Jesus. And you go back to the, in the Bible, and you see we, speaking of we together, God, Jesus was with God at the creation. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, but now if I had totally said, oh, that, what, I'm just too tired. I'm, I'm hallucinating from school, <laughs> I'm whatever. But I, it was 
odd. And, and I think people have these incidents, these feelings, these things happen, and you just ignore them. There's so much else going on in your life. You're so busy, you're so tired. But girls, you hear me. You might have, have you ever had any weird experience like that or seen or felt something or, you know, you might, but when you do, don't say no. And the idea like Heather was talking about the dream. Oh, you dreamers, hold on to your dream. The two up hands and fingers of the world. Because the world will crush you. Somebody will say, oh, you're silly. Don't talk about ladder. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't let people put you down if you have a dream. That dream could be God's dream for you that you could be doing 40, 50 years from now. You have no idea that could happen. Anybody at all here have a show? Hey, some very interesting ones in Wikipedia. If you'd like to share some other time with me or, email, you know what, I'd love to hear them, uh, but, but God does work in our lives. And at each of these times this happens, it gives us something to work for, to think towards. And like, like uh, Clay was just sharing about the Shackleford and the expedition, the people, they had their hope. They had their vision on getting home. Shackleford had the Psalm, he held on to God's promise. The transfiguration was for the disciples. We know the end of the story. We know Jesus is raised and we have hope. But we need to find something in our own lives, something we'll connect to, that we can hold on to in our hearts because life will get rough. But God is always with us. He has a plan for us and it's a good one. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us turn now to our hymn. Shine, Jesus shine. It's on the faith we sing and in our and the projected verses one, two, and three, please.
thank you, choir. <laughs> the choir has expanded. <laughs> you still need people? To, you may be seated. I'm sorry. Uh, you still need people? More people to choir? Sure. sure. We'll that one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's join our hearts now in prayer. Um, some updates, uh, I would like to know what the prayer additions would you like to share this morning? Royals at the ready there with a the mic. There you go. Patsy first. Thank you, Royal. Um, I have two. Uh, one, of course, is for Jimmy Carter mm, as oh, yes. he's uh, transitioning from uh, this life into the next. And the second is for my uh, nephew, Willie, my sister's son, who um, if you had heard uh, from previous prayer requests, he had been arrested. Mm -hmm. He was uh, sentenced last week and he's going to be in um, a federal prison for another 24 months. Mm -hmm or so, so um, prayers for him um, as he does that, and prayers for my sister and my, my other nephew, Danny, and his wife, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, Patsy. We are to pray for those in prison. We are to visit those in prison. We are not to forget them. They are all God's children. Good morning. Hello. So prayers for my Aunt Sue. It's my dad's um, younger sister. She yeah. fell and broke her hip. Oh. She's in a um, nursing home battling dementia, so. Uh -huh surgery this week and um, recovery. So to be there for her and her boys. And where is she now, Stacy? Uh, she's across the river in Garnet. Oh, in Garnet, Sapphire Garnet? In the hospital? Okay, I know it well. It's be a lot, a lot. That's sad. How old is she? How old is she? 74. 74. Mm -hmm. Um, prayers for, a, um, I just found out a friend of ours from uh, high school um, is in intensive care. He had a kidney transplant and there's complications oh. and he's also having some heart complications. So um, prayers for his family um, as they go through this and try to figure it out. And what hospital is he in? I don't really know. Um, they're from Beacon. I don't even know if you know them. They're probably, I, I don't know if they do them in Vassar, but West, when I was at Westchester Medical, they did a lot of kidney transplants. I was. I, I mean, them. I'm thinking since it was something so big, it's probably not around here, but I don't really know. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be, they're all good hospitals around here, yeah. but I know that. But I've seen a lot of these and they come back and they had a lot of problems and they, it, they do a lot of work. It's a, it's a long healing, but kidneys are amazing. Amazing what doctors and, and God can do. Mm -hmm. so, what is his first name? Ed. Ed. Thank you. Um, and then I just know so, so, so many people who are battling cancer right now that yeah. I can't even list the names. And it's really sad to say that, but um, I guess just prayers for anyone who's battling any life-threatening disease, yeah. because it seems like there's a lot more of it right now. And my friend, Michelle, who just lost her dad, she's having a really hard time with that. So those are my prayers. Loss, loss also, people passing. It's Thank you, Michelle. Anybody else? I've got one. Yes, and this is Carol. Hi, Carol. Hello. Still in Florida. <laughs> um, my my person is the Reverend Michael Hall, who, mm -hmm. as you all know, is an old friend from Plymouth Plantation who is battling prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And my prayer is he is really enjoying himself these last few days as he's on a road trip with an old buddy to Cooperstown. To, uh, to the baseball museum of uh, history there. And he's so excited that he's well enough to be on the road, well enough to be eating these giant diner breakfasts and um, <laughs> had a smile on his face uh, that he put on Facebook that I have not seen in a while. So hoping this regenerates him, makes him feel that he's headed in the right direction and uh, that thanks to God that he made this trip he has a wife and three children, so and he's a pastor of a church. So the fact that this chip was able to be is um, is a wonderful thing too. He's on so, a sabbatical, right, Carol? He is, he yes, and he is that. using it for the best of everything. Mm -hmm. He's really recharging, and it's hard for him not to just go back. <laughs> he's yeah. having a terrible 
a terrible time being on a sabbatical. He's really, yeah. and he keeps telling everyone, just because I'm a, on a sabbatical, if you need me, you know I'm here. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of guy he is. So thank you. Thank you very much, Carol, friend. for his thank update. You. Yes, Carl. Uh, prayers uh, that the CDC will oh. be able to find the uh, cause of uh, all the problems that are going on in Palatine, uh, Ohio, Ohio's uh, general area, including uh, over into Pennsylvania, and that the EPA will take remedial action. Mm. Thank you for that. Excellent reminder, Carl. Uh, uh, prayers for the LaGuardia family LaGuardia. Um, on the passing of their grandfather. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Okay, and we are continuing to pray for all those folks here online. Um, also, uh, Fred, uh, Fred Jackson, you all know Fred, Reverend Fred Jackson, uh, old friend of the church. Uh, he is, is battling cancer. Uh, several different types of treatments he's in the midst of, and he would he loves prayers. He invites you to pray for him. I will, I've given the, the prayer updates to the prayer chain, um, but hopefully he'll be here speaking to you. He'll be preaching in April, and this is like a vision he has. He really, really, really wants to do this. He re, you know, hopefully he'll be well enough. If not, we have very capable leadership here. We'll take care of that. But uh, it's like he's holding on for this, and you know he's he's very positive about his treatment. So please keep. Uh, and he invites calls, phone calls, whatever. If anybody wants to send him a note, uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, we're also praying for the people in Turkey and Syria, the earthquake victims. It's so hard to have something like this happen and then we forget. Uh, the news goes away and, and like with Palantine, he's Palantine. And I just asked that my cousin Rosie, I think, did I keep, yeah, I think I finally took Rosie off the list and now she's got to go back on. Uh, she's the one who's been battling pancreatic cancer. Uh, for several months she was doing extremely well but the past couple of days she's been in extreme pain and high fevers so she had emergency surgery and they think it might be the duct work that has come loose whatever i don't know but i haven't heard but uh please keep rosie in prayer for this ongoing challenge any other prayers okay, let us pray oh lord god you have heard our prayers from our hearts and lord you know prayers that are still unsaid in our hearts lord we want you to know how much we love you, how much we trust you, how much we hear you, and how much you are a bright spot in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this church family. And we thank you, Lord, for the love that comes from you that emanates from here out into the world. We ask, Lord, that you continue to shine on us, give us strength, and help us never forget the vision of love and hope that is so true in what we know. Lord, we pray for others in this community. We pray for the men and women who are first responders, for all men and women in the military here and around the world, Lord, keep them safe. Lord, we pray for all doctors and nurses, all medical officials, people working with healing of people and hospitals. Lord, keep them safe and may we all keep aware of the newest situation, the norovirus, which is uh, coming through the areas. Lord, please keep us well, keep us strong. Lord, we thank you for this church and the leadership we have, and we thank you for Heidi, and we thank you for Bob, and Nicole, and, and all the hands behind the scenes. We thank you, Lord, for this the wealth of love we have here that continues to fill us and lead us because we know you are in the midst of it. Lord, we ask for all those who are suffering from drugs or alcohol or any, any addictions, for anyone suffering from mental or emotional situations. Lord, there are so many people who need so much help. And around the world, Lord, where people are not allowed to worship, Lord, we ask that you be them, be with them, give them some sense of your presence so they might remember and never give up. Lord, I pray for, we pray for all the children in schools. We pray for the stop of all of bullying of any sort. We pray for the stopping of bullying between adults. We pray, Lord, that people learn to love and respect each other at every place and every time, wherever they are and where everyone, anybody see bullying, Lord, I ask, that you show us how to step in and stop it. Lord, help us love one another as Jesus taught us. Lord, we ask special prayers. Lord, you know the prayers we've long held in our hearts and we lift up more prayers today. 
Lord, we lift up Aunt Sue. We lift up Reverend Fred Jackson. We lift up Ed. We lift up LaGuardia family. We lift up the people of Palatine, Ohio. We lift up President Jimmy Carter. We lift up Reverend Hall. We lift, lift up Michelle's friend, Ed. Lord, we, we lift up all the people who need your help and healing. We lift up Patsy's nephew. We lift up Rosie. Lord, hear all these prayers, all our prayers, Lord. Now, as Jesus, you taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we think who trespass against us. And not unto temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it is our joy to return back to God what he has so richly blessed us with. If the ushers could please come forward. There you go. I'm going to go back and say that. loving bounteous lord we give back what is yours may it be used in whatever way it needs to be for those who are in need those who are hurting those who need your light shine on us all in jesus name amen and thank you for this this is beautiful Eileen. please be seated It's time to enter the mission field. Now we have something special. Do we have that video today? Karen Riley, last, last Sunday was, seems like long ago than that, was our Heart Sunday. And Karen Rich rushed up to me and she said, I have a video to share. It ties in, and this is something very apropos. It's something a lot of people don't know. I didn't realize this, but you, when people, if you see somebody pass out, their heart has probably stopped. What you need to do is call 911 and give them CPR. Now, it's not the old fashioned mouth to mouth. You don't have to do that. This is very simple and it shows you what to do. So it can happen anytime, any place to you or a loved one. So continuing our heart Sunday, let's take a listen. If you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, it is important to act fast. Helping to save a life is easier than you might think. Just start hands-only CPR. The first step is to ask someone to call 911 and to get an AED or call 911 yourself and put your phone on speaker mode so the operator can assist you. Then get directly over the victim. Put the heel of one hand in the center of the chest and put your other hand on top of the first. Then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. It's important to push giving 100 to 120 compressions per minute, which is about the same tempo as the song you're listening to right now. Remember, call 911 and ask someone to get an AED. Then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until the AED and help arrives. Your actions can help save a life. 
simple. It doesn't take long to not have enough oxygen to your brain to die. Girls, do you know this? Have you had this in school? Your sport's excellent, excellent. Remember, your heart is up here. It's more on the left side. It's in the middle. Not here, not here. Your heart's up here. It's very important. And how many, no more than how many seconds should you stop? 10. Good, good, good lesson. Okay, so that's my our special mission mission for this morning. Are there any others you want to add? All righty. Um, announcements, please. Uh, that Tuesday's back, Tuesday, uh, 5.30. I'll be here at 5.30. Uh, good to see many of you. Uh, we've invited everybody. Please invite your friends and neighbors. Uh, it's a wonderful time. This is the Shrove Tuesday. This is when the, the fat items, the, the real tasty stuff we use up. That's the old tradition, tradition to this, because you're going to uh, be not having any of it during Lent. That's the, the uh, tradition behind that. And then uh, Ash Wednesday service, 7 p.m. Heidi and I will be here. Uh, reverent service with scripture, music, candles, reflection, uh, ashes, if you so desire them. Uh, it's not going to be Zoomed. Uh, very, very quiet, very peaceful. Uh, so please feel free to come. And I have some people coming, I believe, from Wikipedia as well. And anybody else in the world can come, so please invite. And next, uh, we have the others have all been removed now. One last chance for this class on Methodist Belize. If you're interested, please take note. Next, uh, the youth news. Uh, I think I, um, Clay, uh, Clay has been keeping you up to date all this. Uh, please, and also uh, make sure you follow up with your, uh, your jars. Please take one on the way out. And next, food pantry. I see the signs are up this week, right? How does that, that's amazing. I just, it, the time just flies. Okay, and next one? That's it? Okay, are there any other announcements? Yes, Gail. Hi, Gail. Yeah. Looking for articles for the March issue of Trinity Times. So uh, please get your thinking caps on and send them to me. Um, I already have it put together uh, from experience. I know I got to do it ahead of time now <laughs> because you never know what's going to happen next you week. Don't know. Nope. So um, I have uh, the skeleton is already there. I just need your articles to plug in. And also a couple of maybe about a month ago, someone left a bag, uh, a recycled type bag mm -hmm. in the fellowship oh, yes, hall on the table. And uh, it was from Mirabeau or something like mm -hmm. that, yeah. a white bag with a kind of a turquoise design on it's it. Nice, nice design and there bag. was something in it that needs to be returned to that person, but we don't know who it belongs to. Mm -hmm. So if you know anybody who left a bag in the fellowship hall, uh, please come down to the kitchen and see me, okay? And please come to uh, coffee hour. Mm -hmm. We set out a nice spread and we have a great cake today. Ooh. So uh, please come down, have a cup of coffee or tea Excellent. or hot chocolate. We found a box of hot chocolate Excellent. someone had left. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to drink coffee. <laughs> so is, please come. And we had a big crowd down there. We have a table to sit at if you're, you don't feel you can stand that long. Yep, yep. So it's a, it's a wonderful time. Yes, Clay. So I have two announcements today, two announcements. The first, don't forget, Tuesday, 5.30, Best Pancakes, this side of the Mississippi. Probably to be a lot of excitement and a lot of fun. I'll have you on your way by seven o'clock, but it'll be an hour and a half of pure awesomeness. And you need to come, because I purchased 200 of those sausages. Ron Lamar says that they're best sausages in the world. And I purchased 200 of them already. So as they say, I already got the food, so you got to come. Links or patties? Links. Okay. Great links. <laughs> the other news is I was so, I'm so pumped and psyched for Vacation Bible School this year. The theme is outer space. It's going to be stellar. <laughs> it is going to be Out stellar. And we're going to be shining God's light as stars and as moons and as the sun and as cosmos things and it's going to be amazing and i am just so pumped and psyched for vacation bible school so again people have come to me if you want to help do so because many hands make great work and it's just going to be out of this world and stellar so that makes me so pumped and psyched thank you clay thank you clay anybody else have any announcements then as you prepare to go go remembering that god does shine his light when you least expect it 
could be on your, in the car. It could be a coffee hour. Somebody might say something. Uh, you might be driving home and somebody, you might hear a voice. You might see something. You might be sound asleep and have a dream. Be open to it. God is with you. He has messages. He has hope for you to hang on to. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start. God bless you all. Love you. Have some coffee.